This is Jared Horak and it's Wednesday, July 24th. And in this video, I'm gonna recap the Curlin stakes and Haskell. I'm gonna preview the Jim Dandy stakes and then I'm gonna take a look at the latest news in the three-year-old division. Now, if you've been watching my Saratoga quick pick short videos, uh, you'll know that I've given out seven top choice winners from stakes races from nine races. So you can find my Saratoga quick pick videos all summer long on my YouTube channel. And if you're interested in more bonus uh, free selections, you can go over to my Better Bets blog at therunawayhorse.com where you can get free picks from the, around the country each day. And I'm also going to be doing Delmar full cards all summer at therunawayhorse.com. Started out those full cards last week, had a very good day on opening day. And you can purchase individual full cards, weekly and weekend packages, and the entire meet. And you can visit the Runaway Horse shop at therunawayhorse.com for more details. That Delmar meet started on July 20th, and then it runs through September 8th. Now we'll recap the Curlin Stakes, and the winner there for trainer Chad Brown was Unmatched Wisdom, and he went wire to wire as my top choice there. He was the favorite. He looked like the controlling speed, and he was able to win there, and he ran his record to three for three after going all the way and defeating Corporate Power and Time Out at a mile and an eighth at Saratoga in that Curlin Stakes. 150.70 was the final time. And let's see if he doesn't run in the Travers Stakes. The Curlin is a prep race for the Travers. And if he does run in the Travers, uh, he could give Haskell Stakes winner Doorknock a real battle on the front end. Now, in that Haskell Stakes, Doorknock was able to get all over the pace from the inside post and win that race uh, nicely. And he followed up that grade one Belmont Stakes victory uh, with that victory uh, in the Haskell Stakes as well. And he ran his mile in an eighth in 150.21. And this was a carbon copy of the Belmont Stakes because in the Belmont Stakes, Doorknock was all over the pace. He had the lead and mind frame in the Belmont, stalked the pace outside. He rallied and took the lead, uh, but then he was erratic in the stretch. And then Doorknock was able to come back and win the Belmont Stakes. The same thing happened here. It was Doorknock and mind frame. Again, Doorknock on the lead on, from the inside post. Mind frame stalking the pace. He made his move around the turn. He took the lead in the stretch. Uh, but then uh, whatever it was, he was wandering, uh, he lost his focus, Doorknock was able to come back on him again. So that's the third time now that Doorknock has, after getting passed in the stretch, he would come back and win uh, a stakes race. He did that in the Belmont against a mind frame, again against my frame in the Haskell, he did it again. And then last year in the Great two Remsen stakes, Sierra Leone rallied from off the pace, took the lead, and Doorknock was able to come back. So I like the fact that this horse has a good fighting spirit. Uh, but it really just seems like his opponents in those races, Mind Frame twice and Sierra Leone, uh, they made mistakes. They should have won those races. Uh, but Doorknock, no knocking his heart. And now he has back-to-back -back grade one wins. He's targeting the grade one Travers at Saratoga on August 24th. And that could be a battle for your three-year-old championship there. And the horse that he's probably going to have to beat there is the Jim Dandy favorite, Sierra Leone. But Sierra Leone has finished in front of Doorknock in two of three starts this year. So a big battle coming up in, the, in, the, in that Travers Stakes. Now, as for the Jim Dandy, I'm going to have a full-length Jim Dandy Stakes video with wagering strategies on my YouTube channel. So check that out this week. And the Jim Dandy has a six-horse field. Sierra Leone's number one, your even money favorite. Seize the Gray, your Preakness winner, is six to one morning line. Batten down, Ohio Derby winner is five to one. Pony Express, last out maiden winner, 20 to one morning line. Gould's Gold at 15 to 1 morning line, your Ohio Derby runner up. And then um, your Florida Derby winner, Fierceness, 15th in the Kentucky Derby, is 9 to 5, and he's the second choice on the morning line. Now, the Jim Dandy Stakes has four horses that like to get in front early Seize the Gray, Batten Down, Pony Express, and Fierceness. And Gould's Gold will probably sit behind them, and then Sierra Leone will try to rally from last place. Uh, so the race does seem uh, on paper to set up for a closer in Sierra Leone as the even money favorite is the best closer in the field. And as I said, I'll be covering that full length Jim Dandy video on my YouTube channel. So check that out for my analysis and wagering strategies for the Jim Dandy stakes. Now we'll go through some of the other leading three-year-old horses and plans for those horses. Now, Honor Marie, last year's Kentucky Jockey Club stakes winner. That was a grade two race. He was fifth in the Risen Star, second in the Louisiana Derby, eighth in the Kentucky Derby, fourth in the Belmont stakes, and then he had a recent breeze, four furlongs, 48.75 seconds, 14th best of 58 at Saratoga on their dirt training track on July 20th. And he's expected to make his next start in the Travers. 
Now, Mystic Dan, your Kentucky Derby winner, the only horse to run in all three Triple Crown Series races. He's unlikely to run in the Traverse Stakes. Uh, for trainer Kenny McPeak, maybe he could make the Grade 1 Pennsylvania Derby. We'll have to see on September 21st. But he does want to bring him back as a four-year-old, so it's possible that he doesn't run again this year. But we'll have to see if he does get into that Pennsylvania Derby or he just comes back next year. Now, Muth, he was your Preakness favorite. He got sick. He had to scratch out of that race, ship back to Southern California. Originally, they run, wanted to run him in the Haskell, but he wasn't quite ready for that race last week. But now he is back on a regular work pattern. His workouts keep getting better. Six furlong bullet in 111. Uh, that was best of five at Del Mar on July 21st. And he worked in company with his stablemate parenting. And no word on his next start since he missed the Haskell. I'm not quite sure what they're going to do next, but he does seem ready to run. We'll see what Baffert does next with him. As for parenting, he's two for two. He won the Affirm Stakes at Santa Anita by seven and a half lengths on June 9th, getting a 95 buyer speed figure. They considered running him in the Haskell, but then he got sick and missed a workout. Well, they paid $750,000 for this son of Justify. And as I said, he shared the bullet uh, with um, Muth on uh, July 21st at Del Mar, six furlongs and 111 flat. No word on his next start either. Now, Society Man for trainer da uh, Danny Gargan, he's Doorknock stablemate. He was second in the Wood Memorial, 16th in the Kentucky Derby, first in the grade three Matt Wynn stakes at Churchill Downs on June 9th. Now, he breathed four furlongs in 51.50 seconds, 126th best of 138. That was at Saratoga on July 21st, and he is targeting the Grade 3 West Virginia Derby on August 4th. Finally, Thorpedo Anna, the three-year-old Philly leader, most likely your three-year-old Philly champion. She's already done so much this year. Four for four for trainer uh, Kenny McPeak. She won the Grade 2 Fantasy Stakes, the Grade 1 Kentucky Oaks, the Grade 1 Acorn. And then last week, the grade one coaching club, American Oak. She didn't have a great start. She recovered. She dominated that race. She's obviously far and away the best three-year-old filly in the land. And for trainer Kenny McPeak, he's considering the grade one Alabama on August 17th or the grade one Traverse Stakes against the boys on August 24th. And he's going to wait until after the Jim Dandy Stakes before he makes a final decision. He does have Gould's Gold. Uh, in the Jim Dandy Stakes. So it, maybe it depends on how that one does. Brian Hernandez Jr., the rider for Gould's Gold and Torpedo Anna. So maybe if Gould's Gold won uh, that uh, Jim Dandy or he ran well enough to think that he could go in the Travers, maybe they'll go for the Alabama for, for Torpedo Anna. Uh, but they will have to see what they, what they end up doing with Torpedo Anna. If she ran in the Travers, she would uh, demand respect in that race. So that's a look at the latest news in the three-year-old division. And I do these videos each week. Uh, so uh, keep checking out my YouTube channel and then my personal website, therunawayhorse.com, for handicapping articles, uh, videos, free picks, uh, analysis from Delmar, and more. And until I see you next time, good luck at the races. <music>